So good evening to all of you. My name is Akash Sharma and on behalf of Medas IT, I welcome you all to this webinar, Introduction to GTS NX for Geotechnical Finite Element Modeling and Analysis, the prime focus being uh, the Pilegraph Foundation and how GTS NX can be used as an integrated 3D platform for Pilegraph Foundation Analysis. So during the course for our presentations, I will just give you a brief introduction about the product. Okay, Then we'll take into soil structure interaction. What are the capabilities of the software to deal with such kind of problems? Okay, And uh, in the end, I will give you a brief introduction about the interface, the types of modeling of piles that can be done in GTS NX. Okay? So as you already have received an email, the second session basically will be on how to basically take the model from uh, Gen and how to create the complete model uh, to get the settlement uh, or the effectiveness of Pilar Foundation as compared to the RAF Foundation. So that is what uh, we intend to and the third session will be ending basically uh, with a live project. Uh, you already have the details. So the third session will be on how uh, uh, the same feature was used for a live project. Okay. So to start with GTS NX stands for Geotechnical Tunnel Solution, NX standing for New Experience. It is a 2D, 3D as well as an axisymmetric platform uh, which can be used for all types of geotechnical analysis. It is completely finite element based, having its own pre and post processor and own solver developed in South Korea. Okay, so it is a user friendly interface, we'll be showing how, okay, and it is being fully optimized for 64 bit platform uh, giving the client a chance uh, for large scale modeling and large scale meshing. So moving on, interface of the software. Now GTS NX or any finite element software if you will agree, if you run one analysis, uh, you cannot do much in the program till the analysis is completed. Now when you take a real time project, the analysis can go for two, three, two to three hours, which is a lot of time to waste for any engineer, correct? So what GTS NX provides you with is the multi window, okay? Let's suppose you are running one analysis. You can simultaneously open another window and at a time two to three uh, projects so that you can run the analysis simultaneously, do the modeling on another project, okay? And thus save a lot of time. Okay. Even for learning purpose, you will find it's very intuitive GUI. For example, there is some command and you don't know what exactly that command is going to do. You can use a pictorial depiction of what will be the output when you use a particular type of command. Okay, Thus helping you learn the software and adapt to the environment pretty quick. So this was about the interface. Now let us talk about the geometric model and simulation of real-time field condition. Okay. Now whenever it comes to 3D modeling, uh, people are always reluctant to move from 2D to 3D because of the complexity involved in the 3D modeling. But uh, with AutoCAD commands uh, used in GTS NX, you will find it really easy and adapt to the geometric modeling very easily. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, for example, you as you can see in the image one, you have a simple 2D profile of an embankment. You can just say extrude to create a solid out of it. You are dealing with a tunnel, you have the profile, you have the guide curve and you just say sweep and the solid will be created. Once the solids are created, you have the commands like boolean operation, cut, fuse, divide, trim to create any complex geometry in the model itself. Okay, so we'll be seeing in today's and tomorrow's session how exactly, uh, how easily you can, one can model any complex uh, problem. So with this uh, geometric modeling, now automated modeling functions. Okay, now you have like four to five solids. At times you need to cut one solid out of the other. Now it's very easy uh, when you have one or two solids, you can just go and say Boolean cut operation, but it becomes really difficult if you have more number of solids. Okay, so with GTS NX, we came up with the option like auto connect. You just select all the solids and say, okay, the program will automatically perform the Boolean operations. Now second is auto imprint. Now this will be very important uh, aspect we'll be dealing of course when we'll take the model from Gen. What happens whenever you have a building, okay, you have columns, correct? Now uh, it is very important to understand that this column should share a node whenever bought to GTSNX with the raft of our model, 
okay so so that node to node connection and proper load transfer takes place so imprint function is there uh, which can be used uh, to imprint any column or any point onto the surface and make sure that a node is created at that particular location. So GTSNX provides you with auto imprint option. For example, if you have 100 columns or 100 piles, so auto imprint will automatically help you imprint these piles onto the surface of the raft so that a nodal connection is ensured. Okay, so this will be saying basically in our second uh, session. Generation of 3D topographic layers. Now this becomes very much important where you have an undulating surface. Okay, so uh, GTSNX provides you with the option called TGM, Terrain Geometry Maker. What Terrain Geometry Maker does is that it takes the auto DXF contour plot of any particular area and generate the undulating surface. Okay, so with this surface you can create the, your solid model if you want to do any types of analysis like slope stability analysis uh, or a dam, uh, you can model it for a real time simulation. So this is how you can model the top profile and even if you have the borehole location at different location, you can just input the coordinate, give the data for each of the borehole. For example, as you can see borehole 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The program will do a linear interpretation and if there is a varying profile, you can consider that directly in the program. So basic as well as advanced type of modeling is very simple and can be simulated easily in Midas GTS NX. So moving on, so material model to simulate behavior of rocks and soil. So any geotechnical softwares, the capabilities uh, uh, are very much known by the constitutive material models provided by the software. So just to highlight what exactly why it is needed is, as you know that uh, soil can uh, not be modeled as an elastic material, right? So the stress strain equation is uh, basically what we call as constitutive equation and this is what basically gives or uh, give rises to many material models which are used to simulate the various types of soil behavior. For example, Mohr column being the elastoplastic model. Then you have Hoke Brown to consider for rocks and modified cam clay for the clays, modified Mohr column hardening soil, small strain stiffness. So GTSNX provides you with a platform where basic as well as the advanced material models are available. In addition, the programs uh, give you an option of user supplied material. So for example, if you are dealing with a particular type of soil, whose simulation is not possible with the above material models, you can write a Fortran language of your own and uh, define that material model to be used in the analysis. Okay, so the flexibility is there. Next is element library. Okay, so uh, as you will agree and we will see during our course uh, this three day session that everything can be modeled at this as a solid element okay even if when we deal with pile graph you can model all of your pile as a solid element but the problem is first the number of elements so hence the analysis time increases that too is secondary but the third is with the solid elements you cannot get directly the actual forces and the bending moments in the pile which at times are required to understand the behavior and design the pile Okay, so JTSNX provides you with the element library like 1D elements, uh, truss element, embedded truss element, beam elements, pile elements to model the structural elements uh, in 1D and get the results according to the behavior. For example, in a slope stability, if I'm using some anchor or ensuring if I'm using some anchor, what I'll be doing is I will be using a truss element to model it. If I'm modeling a pile, I'll be using a uh, beam element right now when I, when I talk to uh, talk about uh, walls I can use plate element so all the options of element library of 1D and 2D elements are available to model all types of structural element okay so moving on now we'll talk about the soil structure interaction that is how we can deal a pile raft with GTS NX so all of you are very much aware of pile raft foundation so just to start with um just a second i will just sign out 
Okay, so all of you are very much aware with PileDrive Foundation. So just to give a brief introduction is PileDrive Foundation provides with an economical foundation op uh, option and the play in the circumstances where the performance of the raft uh, alone does not satisfy the design requirements. Now, if we talk about the advantage of the Pilera Foundation, so uh, we have the limitation of absolute and the differential settlement. It helps in reduction in foundation tilting uh, if there is any load eccentricity and reduction in the raft internal stresses because of the distribution to the piles. Okay, so this is uh, what a basic uh, uh, all of us know about Pilera Foundation. Now, why we need uh, a numerical modeling for uh, pile raft foundation okay so whenever we deal with pile raft foundation there are very much uh, there are different types of interaction which needs to be considered to get proper results you have pile soil interaction you have pile pile interaction then raft soil interaction and of course the pile raft interaction so all this interaction needs to be considered whenever you are dealing with the pile raft and hence the numerical modeling comes into play because it is the only platform which helps you simulate this problem or consider all this interaction uh, in a single go. Okay, so that is why the need came for the numerical modeling. Now, what is the general approach uh, for modeling uh, any pile raft foundation? Okay, so first you have the geotechnical tests. Okay, you know what is the different layers based on the material model which you are going to use. You have the E-values, cohesion, friction angle for different layers. You create a basic numerical model. Okay, you have your building, you have your piles. Okay, then you simulate your model. Okay, and then you do a calibration uh, with the pile test. For example, uh, with the pile test you calibrate your material model and you again do your numerical model to simulate the field condition. Once you simulate, then you apply your load combinations and then uh, run the analysis to check for the serviceability or the ultimate limit state design. Okay, then there might be an interaction to the structural team. Okay, and, and that is after the analysis has been done in the structural software. You can give the spring stiffness to them. They can use it and analyze in the structural software. Okay, but in, ge in geotechnical analysis, this is uh, what are the steps uh, involved. So now when we talk about the approaches, there are basically two approaches uh, for pile raft foundation. One approach will be the direct method, okay, where the so uh, soil structure system is modeled and analyzed as a single unit. Okay, the methods which are available are the finite element method and the finite difference method. This is more complex and time consuming as far as structural changes are concerned. Okay, so if you are doing any structural concern, so you have to remodel at times. For example, your raft thickness if you are changing and you, if you have modeled it as a solid element. So such kind of changes is not very much simple, but uh, it uh, this is a proper way of doing the soil structure interaction because as you know uh, the soil structure interaction is nothing but a phenomena in which the response of the soil and the moment of structure influence each other and can be considered in a better way okay so direct method always provides you a better approach now let us talk in detail about the design process in direct approach so whenever we go for any pile raft foundation, uh, we start with approximate preliminary stage just to assess that whether there is a requirement of pile raft or not, or if we can do uh, with just raft. Okay. Then come the complete analysis to understand the spacing of the piles, what is the pile diameter, what will be the optimized pile location uh, so that we can control our settlement and the stresses. Correct. So when we come to the preliminary stage, So as I said, here we just make sure that whether we required a pile raft foundation or not, okay? So you model a raft only, you model a pile raft only, you check what is the uh, absolute settlement, maximum settlement, what is the differential settlement with uh, with raft only, and then you can run with basically uh, pile location, basic pile location and length, and check what is the influence, okay? And based on the settlement value, you can understand that whether a pile raft is required for a particular project or not. Fine. So with the preliminary analysis done, then we come to a uh, complete analysis. So what is the spacing of the pile? What is the pile diameter? Okay. And what is the pile location or what should be the arrangement of the piles? Now this is all parametric study based on the settlement contour or the stress contour. The geotechnical engineers need to decide the uh, the basic uh, 
uh, diameter the influence of diameter the spacing okay now this will be supported by GTS and X when you run the parametric analysis fine so this is a general uh, approach when you go for a direct method okay so preliminary analysis just to check whether uh, there is a requirement of pile draft or not and then complete analysis to come out with the complete layout of the pile and the die of the piles now next is the direct and indirect method effectiveness with GTS and X basically how uh, GTS and X helps you in uh, this kind of simulation so let us see so first of all uh, GTS and X is having a CAD compatibility so you can bring the DXF file and even it has compatibility with other Midas software so just people who are unknown of this uh, Midas has uh, Midas Gen which is a building software for building and general structure design Midas Civil which is for bridges okay so if you have created any building or any bridges in uh, Gen or Midas Civil uh, you have an option or you have we have an interface with GTS NX where you can bring the whole building from Midas Gen okay so with the dead loads and the live loads okay so then you can bring your building and use it as a load to get the basically what is the settlement what is the differential settlement at each column nodes okay so what I mean to say is this is what I mean to say you have created something in gen you can uh, I'm sorry you have created something in gen uh, you can bring it in GTS and X create the soil profile here create the type of foundation you are interested in and then run the analysis so this is how GTS helps you in direct method okay it's, it is having a direct uh, compatibility with the structural software Next is, let's suppose uh, uh, you want to bring your reactions, you have the column reactions, okay. So what uh, we have the option is, uh, you, we have the option of renumbering. So you can renumber according to your project, okay. And then uh, we have a particular format of Excel, you can Excel, you can put your uh, column reactions and directly bring it as a nodal load or as a pressure load. Now what is the advantage of this, okay. Now any any changes done in the structural software or by the structural team results in change of the reaction you will agree to me okay now I can manually go and apply on each node okay but if I have like 300 columns or 400 columns for a high-rise building I cannot do it again and again so what load table import does is it helps you directly import any changes you just import that Excel and automatically the loads get updated okay so this facility is also there so if you're not uh, for example importing the building you can also import through Excel sheets okay so if any other software you have the reactions you can bring the reactions using the Excel sheets and apply the load load combination so if you have get your uh, dead load reactions and live load reactions separately you can bring it in GTS and X create a combination here and apply it as a load combination uh, for your analysis moving on the second approach is the substructure method basically uh, here the ground behavior is modeled with the help of springs in the structural software now structural changes and modeling is easy to perform because everything is done in the structural software okay now but it will require an iterative process between the structural engineer and geotechnical engineer what the structural engineer will be needing is basically the spring stiffness at different locations okay so that we have a, not a uniform settlement all throughout of the raft so you can perform an analysis in GTS and X okay you can get the uh, displacement and the stresses coming in the plate give the stiffness at different location uh, to the structural team they can incorporate in their uh, springs and then run the analysis okay so it will be an iterative process till uh, both come to a convergence criteria let's suppose 5% or 10% displacement uh, difference okay so two approaches direct method you do everything in GTS and X you get the settlement and every everything the second if you are modeling it in gen or any a structural software and you want the spring stiffness from GTS and X uh, you can model it over here you can take the spring stiffness from here at different location and with iteration come to the same type of displacement uh, as achieved in Midas gen okay so these are the two approaches and how the software can be helpful uh, in dealing with both the situations. Now we'll come to the meshing tools. Like any finite element software, Midas GTS and X being a 
2D and 3D platform provides you with 2D, 3D auto mesh, map mesh, okay, optimization of mesh is possible area which you want to mesh finer and coarser can be considered, thus help you save some time in the analysis. Even if you have created a 2D profile, you can just extrude that 2D profile to create a 3D one. So hybrid mesh with hexahedral elements, okay. So in addition to tetrahedron uh, elements, Medas GTS also provides you with hexahedral elements in 3D analysis. Hexahedral elements uh, are more structured type of uh, mesh and gives more structured contour as compared to tetrahedral elements. And even the count is less for the same mesh size, okay. So better results in uh, with less number of elements as possible with hybrid elements. Anyways, you have the flexibility, you can select any out of the two. So moving on, now let us talk about the loading options. So if you want to consider the static load, self weight, force, moment, displacement, pressure, all kinds of static loads are available with Medas GTS NX. When you come to dynamic loads, you have design spectrum, design codes are available inbuilt, ground acceleration, already you have inbuilt data of 52 earthquakes, so you can directly use. And even if you uh, want to use any specific uh, ground acceleration or any specific earthquake data, uh, you can directly copy paste the function uh, through Excel and directly use. There is no requirement of any particular format, thus making it easy uh, to input your data, correct? Also, uh, we have blasting load, okay, now blasting load if you want to do a blasting load dynamic analysis. So various institutes are already inbuilt, so you can just input the data and the blasting load uh, gen can be generated and it will be a dynamic loop and can be used for time history analysis. Automated live load data generation. Now this is for high speed trains. Okay, uh, pr the program gives you a wizard where you can convert the uh, if you just give the train type, the number of wheels, train velocity, the program will automatically generate a time history load for you, which can be run to study the response, uh, dynamic response of a moving train, being on an embankment or any kind of geotechnical structure. Now, let us come to the geotechnical analysis, which can be done in the program. So linear and static and non-linear static analysis, which will be basically our requirement for uh, pile drive foundation, okay? Then you can perform the slope stability analysis considering C5 reduction method, dynamic analysis. So you want to do eigenvalue, response spectra, linear time history, non-linear time history analysis, or 1D, 2D equivalent linear analysis can be performed. So GTSNX provides you with the option of coupled analysis. Uh, basically, uh, it helps to uh, combine two types of analysis and get the results. For example, you can couple nonlinear time history analysis plus C5 reduction method. So as the time history uh, analysis is run, you can uh, give a time to the program. Like if you have 10 second earthquake at 3 second, what is the factor of safety? At 6 second, what is the factor of safety? Okay, so such kind of advanced coupled analysis are available. Seepage analysis, you have water level and you want to see the ferritic line and the flow lines, you can use the seepage analysis. Seepage uh, stress fully coupled analysis, so if you want to study as the seepage occurs, what is the change in post stress or uh, what is the effect on the stress condition of the soil can be studied. So once again a coupled kind of analysis. Consolidation, if you are dealing with an area which are having clay and you are expecting a long term settlement, you can consider consolidation analysis. You'll agree with me, all this analysis, uh, right from static slope, seepage, uh, is very much important to consider construction stage analysis because with soil, with each stage, basically the stress condition in the soil changes and which is going to affect our next stage. So we will be, even for a simple pile drive foundation, uh, we'll try to simulate different uh, stages, yeah, inside condition, then we change the property of uh, raft to concrete or we activate our raft, then we activate our load, okay, so it will be all in stages, not in a single go, because it's very important to simulate the stress changes which occurs as a result of construction uh, uh, process in the field, okay, so we cannot s simulate the minute details, but yes, we have to consider the big changes which can be modeled in the program. Okay, so these are the various types of analysis which can be done in the program. 
Now advanced post processing tools. Okay, so once we uh, an analyze. Okay, so what we get is we get a contour plots. We get the flow lines. You have options like cutting uh, pl cutting plane or cutting line diagram to get the bending moment or axial force out of the uh, uh, plate elements. Okay, so this is basically a graphic based output what you will get from the software. Then you have the visualization or extraction of results which becomes important from engineering point of view. So at any point of time you can probe the value where you are getting the maximum, where you are getting the uh, minimum settlement. You can take this data to Excel to create graph and even you can create the graph in the software itself. Then you have the options like ISO surface. So which is the which are the area which are going to settle more than a particular value can be checked and analyzed. So this will be basically demonstrated uh, as we uh, move on to our second session. Okay, so today I'm just giving a brief about the same. Now project applications, so I'm just not focusing much. Uh, uh, so few of the project applications where the software has already been used, Dubai Tower, Palazzo Versus and D1 Tower, Abu Dhabi Tower. So I'm just uh, naming the PileGraph foundations. Uh, you have the Pantonium Tower and the biggest application once constructed uh, will be the tallest in the world, the Kingdom Tower uh, done by the London International and used uh, Midas GTS for the PileGraph Foundation analysis. So today, uh, so this was all about the software, the basic introduction about the software. So now uh, basically I would be tell, giving a brief introduction about the GUI and the modeling of piles. Okay, so how exactly the modeling can be done in the software while you consider a pile drive foundation. Okay, so uh, first approach is the solid modeling. Okay, you can model your soil as solid. Okay, and the pile as solid element. Okay, and then you can uh, create an interface between the two to simulate the slip behavior or the uh, interface properties. Okay, now what are the advantages and disadvantages? Okay, now think from a real time project point of view. Okay, you have like uh, 100 piles, 50 piles, 60 piles, you are going to model it as a solid element. And of course you have to mesh it fine to take into consideration properly the behavior of stress transfer. So what happens the number of elements increases okay even with the uh, new advancement in the hard disk still it takes a lot of time to uh, analyze for any other software. Okay, so you of course you can model your pile as a solid element if you are just doing for a pile load test uh, calibration you can model it as a solid element but but what happens when you come to pile drive foundation it is very difficult to model 100 or 200 piles as solid elements mesh it fine so accordingly the solid mesh also becomes fine and the number of elements becomes too huge uh, to analyze it easily okay it can take two to three days uh, to analyze okay so one approach uh, of course we have modeling of piles as a solid element but the problem comes is basically uh, when we deal with pile drive foundation is the number of elements and the analysis time okay second is uh, solid element and the embedded beam model so here what we can do is basically we model the soil as the solid element but uh, for the pile we use embedded beam okay now embedded beam is a special type of element where the program automatically takes care of the nodal connectivity and no interface is required it it considers a rigid connection uh, with the soil okay so for the initial analysis you can use the embedded beam model okay so no need of uh, nodal connection and the program will automatically run so here you will save a lot of elements okay being 1d element and hence the analysis will be far much quicker than the solid approach the third approach is basically uh, uh, what I can say line to solid type of interface element here also the soil will be modeled as solid uh, the pile element will be modeled as a beam element not embedded beam okay so when you model it as a beam element you have to define an interface okay so this type of interface is basically line to solid so uh, here no nodal connectivity is required so it is very much suitable for pile draft foundation the program automatically takes care of the nodal uh, connectivity you have to give the stiffness parameters for the interface being the normal stiffness shear stiffness and the ultimate shear force okay so these are the three modeling approaches okay so uh, let me just go to the software now so that uh, we can have
so we can just have an introduction for the interface so that in the next exercise you can relate to the various commands okay so today I will show you one approach basically the modeling of uh, uh, the so, uh, pile as a solid element okay uh, and then and anyways we are going to take the beam element modeling for the real-time project but I will show you for example if you want to do a single pile load test calibration how can uh, you do that So this is basically the interface of the software, okay? So if I can show you, uh, this top bar we called as the main menu bar, okay? For any project completion, you can just start from the left. First, the geometric modeling. So all the geometric modeling commands are in here. Then you go to mesh, the material and property definition, then generation of mesh. And type of analysis which you want to do, static slope with construction state page C page dynamic generate the analysis case and finally run the analysis to get the results okay now the left hand side we called it as a works tree window okay so whatever you create you create the geometry till meshing so if you can see uh, on the left hand side this is basically divided in three parts model analysis results and properties so model is anything which you create till meshing the geometry the material property and the meshing all comes in the model tab Anytime you want to edit something, you can come here and you can open it to select that and say edit to change the values. Then after that, whatever you create, like the boundary condition, the load, your analysis case, the construction stage definition, everything can be checked from the analysis. Okay. And finally, you have the results to check the results. Okay. The main window, which you are seeing where uh, you can see the grid, which I'm just moving is basically the working window, whatever you create, your commands are basically here and the, at the bottom, you have the output window. Okay. Now, few things to understand. Okay. Now, first thing is the work plane important. Okay. The work plane can anytime be changed according to the global coordinate system. Now you can see there are two coordinate system. One is on the right hand uh, corner side of the window, which is the global. It remains constant. And this is the working, which you can change according to your work plane requirement. Okay. So these are the various viewing or selection options, viewing options. Okay. So I think this will be enough. Uh, I will just take one uh, problem where I will show you how easily it is to model and how, what will be the ways to define the construction state for a simple uh, pile analysis model as a solid element okay now uh, anytime you want to model anything in the software uh, 3d uh, the best thing is to think of the most suitable 2d simulation of the same okay now for example i want to create a soil mass okay a single so homogeneous soil layer and i want to create a circular pile Okay, now the best requirement or the best 2D requirement for me will be a rectangle and a circle, right? So first of all, what I do is I go to work plane and change my work plane to XY. So it becomes horizontal. Okay, I go to rectangle. I can say 0, 0 and 20, 20. If I can go to the isometric view, these are the various wing options. So this is the basically rectangle. Then I go to circle give the input say 10 comma 10 which is the center location and let's say 0.6 meter is basically the radius of the circle fine now this is my basic profile now to create any solid I just use uh, I have to use the command extrude extrude okay now select the target object whatever you want to select uh, in the working window this is the selection filter which controls it. For example, if I want to select the rectangle, I'm not able to do it because the selection filter says face. So you can make it basic, select the rectangle, the direction in which you want to extrude the solid, length, let's say 20 meters, preview it. So it's going up, so you can make it negative or check on the reverse direction. I'm naming it as soil and say apply. Okay, then I go to select target object, I'm making it edge to select my circular 
pi circular as uh, the circle I'm sorry then select the extrusion direction and let's say the pi length is minus 10 meters I'm giving the geometry set a name being pi preview it and say ok fine now what I was uh, telling you was uh, the now I basically want to cut the inner solid out of the uh, main solid okay so I can use the boolean cut operation fine I can select it and then I can select the tools okay but if I have like hundred solids I cannot go for doing uh, let me just save it I cannot go on doing for each of the solids the cut operation so we came up with the option like auto connect you just make the method boolean you just say select all and say ok the program will automatically perform the boolean operation now see whatever I have created goes in geometry now so I have one soil set and one pile set so if I hide the pile you can see that the solid has been cut out of the soil part fine so this will be my basic uh, geometric modeling for a simple pile then I move to mesh I go to material okay create isotropic fine so you have the model type I'm selecting elastic for pile and giving it a name uh, sorry giving it a value uh, to E7 poisons ratio of let's say 0.2 and unit weight of 24 say apply then I select the material model for soil I'm considering it as elastoplastic and more coulomb okay and I'm just assuming some values 50,000 E value 0.3 20 as the unit weight cohesion let's say 36 and friction angle uh, sorry cohesion 30 and friction angle 36 just say ok then we come to the property now, property is basically what kind of element you are going to assign to since we don't have 1D element so whenever you have pile a model as a 1D element you will select 1D now right now we have both model as 3D element so just select 3D so just give it a name with the correct material property pile and soil say ok fine so once you are done now in GTS and X we assign the material property when you are meshing it okay now so when you have 1D element so you will mesh 1D and at the same time you assign the property so now we have 3D so just select 3D select the pile I am giving it a size of 0 0.2 property of pile and I am giving it a name let's say pile apply then I am selecting the outer edge or outer soil giving it a size of 1 the property of soil so this is the location where you assign the property say soil and say ok fine now if you want to check whether we have applied it correct or not right so whenever you define the material property you have the flexibility of controlling the color from here so if you have some design color for a particular type of soil you can just come over here and say I'm sorry material color so accordingly it will change so once uh, done now we have to define the interface element otherwise uh, the pile and soil will be in rigid connection so if you have very hard soil you can consider it as rigid but uh, mostly we define interface to consider the interaction between the two so you come to interface plane type select the element boundary so you can give manual input or you can use the wizard so strength reduction which you are considering so I'm considering 0.7 now create the rigid element I will tell you why and the plane interface okay now as the interface gets created basically this nodes get separated okay so what we need to do is we need to generate a rigid link between them so anytime when you are not activating your interface this rigid link will join the nodes okay so when you activate the interface you have to deactivate the rigid link hope it is clear hmm? say so, okay fine so the interface is generated now uh, whenever we do any geotechnical analysis the first stage we always try to keep in situ condition inside condition so that we can generate the stresses in the model because of the stress uh, sorry because of the self weight of the soil but right now what I did is I model it as uh, a concrete element 
Okay, so similar problem will come even we model a real time pile raft foundation. Initially, where we have raft is basically soil. Later during the construction stage, it changes to concrete. Okay, so I like to uh, tell you about this option change property. So it's a boundary condition. Okay, now I'll show you how it works. So change property. So I'm going to construction stage because we'll be using a construction stage definition. So I'm selecting this pile and I'm changing the property to soil. What this means is whenever this boundary condition is activated, the mesh set of pile is having the soil property. Hope it is clear. Okay. So this can be used at any point of time at a later stage. For example, initially you messed your uh, raft with a with soil property and during the construction stage you want to change it to uh, concrete so that can be done okay to more if I can relate with tunnels so what happens when initially we provide the short crete lining uh, it is having very uh, low uh, very high strength or later on maybe you replaced it with initially it is steel and later on it changes to concrete so at such type of construction stage because while meshing you can only assign one type of material property to the object okay so uh, this uh, that is why we need a boundary condition to change the property during construction stage so I'm changing the property to soil say okay fine next we provide the boundary condition so in the static slope you have constraint so you have manual uh, options like basic advanced where you can manually select and assign the uh, boundary condition or you can directly go to auto and just give it a name GS standing for ground support and say OK. The program will provide the boundary condition to your model. Then all the loads are here. We define self weight. Say OK. So program will automatically consider the self weight. Now any point of time you want to hide and hide something. For example, I just want to hide the boundary condition. I go to analysis, boundary, static load. Even I come here, I just want to hide the soil, the interface and just want to see basically the pipe okay so I'm just going to front view want to apply some pressure load go to pressure 3d element face so I'm just selecting the top face fine give it some value let's say 200 kilonewton per meter square and say pressure so since the type is normal it will directly apply the normal force on it say okay Fine. So this is a basic modeling basically uh, how we can consider it. Now let us see the construction stage definition which will be helpful for our uh, coming exercises. So whenever you want to define any construction stage you come to construction stage say stage set. Okay. Now I am saying a simple pile analysis. So you can generate two to three cases in the same, mo in the same model. Okay. So add select and say define construction stage now first stage I am naming it as in C2 okay now you will agree with me that in C2 uh, everything is soil fine now I'm activating my pile see uh, now let me just uh, help you understand how we define construction stage anything uh, these are all whatever you create goes on to the set data whatever you activate uh, want to activate comes here in the activated data and whatever you want to remove goes into the deactivated data fine so I'm saying show data activate means whatever whatever I am activating will be seen so nothing is activated activate my pile and my soil fine now you will agree with me the pile is having the concrete property right now so what I do I activate this boundary condition which change the property to concrete Fine. So this will be very important when you uh, deal with pile drive foundation. At any point of time, you can change the property. That's why I included this. Okay. Then I activate the ground support condition, and then I activate the self weight. Okay. Now there is one problem. Uh, when we generate the interface, okay. So I, as I told, the nodes get split. But now this soil is basically they are in rigid connection, right? So what I do, I activate the rigid link mesh. Okay, so what I mean is now there is pile, there is soil, they are in proper ground conditions, okay, without any interface element, okay, and all are having the soil property. That's what I did here. Then I save it, then I say new, okay, and then I say activation of pile, okay. So what I do, I deactivate the rigid link mesh set, fine, and I activate the plane interface. 
fine still the property has not changed so what I do I deactivate this boundary condition okay so now it is having the same property with what we messed it okay now you can say save it so now we have concrete pile and the interface element activated then I say new and apply the pressure load so apply pressure now let's suppose you want to apply it in some increments instead of all at once you can go to analysis control non-linear okay uh, you can say every increment and define 20 fine so what will happen the load will be applied in 20 increments so you can always change the convergence criteria from here I'm just selecting displacement say okay save it and close it you go to analysis general solution type I'm making it construction stage okay now one thing more just let me go to static slope stage set in the initial stage uh, what happens there is no displacement because of the sulfate right so we have an option like clear displacement okay where what will we are going to tell the program is because of the sulfate in this particular stage I'm saying okay later on if you activate anything uh, you can see the displacement for this stage I want don't want to see any displacement because of sulfate so I'm saving it but what I need is I want to have the initial stress condition in the model so I go to analysis I go to general select the solution type in construction stage and in the analysis control I select initial stage for stress analysis so in C2 now I can give it a name and perform the analysis since it is going to take some time so what I will do is in between I'll just open a already analyzed model file so that I can show you the results okay so similar uh, model I've just analyzed okay so when if I go to results so you can see uh, with each stage what is the displacement for each increment can be seen okay there are different ways of viewing it if I say undeformed so even if you can cut a slice to check how exactly the displacement is going to happen just going to the side view okay so I'm just cut in between uh, to see the uh, displacement contours okay even if you want to check the ISO value surfaces of how exactly the surface or which are the area which are having a value particular for example if I change it to millimeter and if I just I'm sorry let me just so what are the areas which are having settlement in the range of 1.2 okay so I can just move it and accordingly see the displacement contours which can help to understand the pile group action in case of pile draft foundation fine so this is about the modeling how to see the results now if I just say like this if I want to probe it so probe maximum and minimum so it will show you where exactly maximum is positive value minimum is negative so how much it is settling okay even if you want to extract the value for example you want to see with each step of the load increment how exactly you are getting the settlement you can select any number of nodes okay and just say table so you will get uh, in a tabular format with each step how the node is going to vary okay so uh, this is all from my side for today uh, let me just move on to the presentation now So if I can just summarize today, I show you the effectiveness of GTSNX as a 3D uh, platform uh, for pile drive foundation analysis uh, and the various kinds of other analysis which can be uh, uh, done in GTSNX. Okay, I showed you the interface, three types of pile modeling. Okay, in the upcoming session, uh, we will be seeing how exactly uh, we will be bringing a complete model from Medasgen. We'll see what are the considerations needed. We'll model a pile draft foundation. We'll study the behavior with pile and uh, with pile raft and with raft only uh, to see what is the general workflow to solve any problem uh, and session to be concluded with a real time project. So thank you very much uh, to all of you for joining the session. Hope you find the session useful.
Uh, in between, if you have any queries, you can write to us at, uh, at tech support at the rate midasit.com. Thank you. So if you have any further queries, you can kindly use the question tab box. For any further queries, you can use the question tab box right now so that I can answer you directly. I'm sorry, due to some technical difficulties, uh, I'm not able to get the question. So I'll request you to kindly send your queries to uh, techsupport at the rate midasite.com. 